Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 4.1, Solving Polynomial Equations. So solving a polynomial equation is actually really similar to solving a quadratic equation. What you got to do is move everything over, set it to be equal 0, then factor it and find the zeros, and that happens to be the solution. So the first thing we want to do when we factor is set it to be equal to f of x, and then if we can common factor it, we will. In this case, we can common factor it at 3x, so here we go, we will. Minus 5 x, oops, should be cubed, squared, minus 28x, and just always check back over your work and make sure you didn't make any mistakes. And so I'm going to factor this cubic, so I'm going to give it a new name, let's let it be g of x. And I want to write all of the PRR. If you have a constant that's less than 100, I do expect you to write all of the PRR, so don't be lazy, just do it. I know you don't want to, but you know, it's good practice. So just write all of these out. See, it doesn't take that long. And then we'll test them. So I know what the answer is, so I'm actually going to cheat a little bit. g of 1 is not equal to 0. You could just type into your calculator and find the answer. g of 1 half actually is 0, so you can do that. And I'm going to use synthetic division. You could use long division, of course. You don't have to know synthetic division, but I'm just going to do it because it is a little bit faster. So we take all of the coefficients from g of x to negative 5, negative 28, and 15. And we're just going to move this 2 down, so I'll do a quick reminder of how to do it. Multiply this by 1 half, 1, add these together, multiply by half again, we get negative 2, add them, it's negative 30. Multiply by 1 half one more time, we get negative 15, add them together, it's 0. We do want a remainder of 0, so that's good. We're going to write it in factored form, so f of x equals 3x times 2x minus 1, because we want that 2 to be in the front, we don't want to have a fraction, and because we're having that 2 in the front, we're going to divide everything by 2, so this becomes x squared minus 2x minus 15, and then you can use quadratic formula to do this quadratic, or you can use your giant brain. I happen to know that this is x minus 5 times x plus 3, so that gives us our factored form, and then we're just going to find the zeros, and those are our solutions, so x equals 0, that comes from there, x equals 1 half, x equals 5, and x equals negative 3. Those are the solutions. Put a little victory dance around it, and we're done. Okay, next question. Tom has a silo. It's made of a hemisphere and a cylinder, so I'm going to go ahead and start drawing that right now. Actually, I should draw it a little bit bigger because I do want to label everything. So you don't have to make let statements if you are labeling, so that's kind of convenient. So just draw the cylinder right there, and I'll make my radius r, and then I have a hemisphere on top, that's half a sphere, okay, and I can see that it says the centrical portion has a height of 15 meters, so this height is 15, like that, and the volume is 684 pi, so I want to know what the radius is, so the volume is going to be the area of this cylinder, which is pi r squared h, plus the volume of a sphere, pi r cubed, times one half, because it's a half, and we do expect you to know these formulas, so I'm just going to simplify it and put these values in, so volume is 684 pi, and the height is 15, so 15 pi r squared plus, and this divides out, so I get 2 over 3 pi r cubed, like that. I'm just going to move this over and also put it into standard form, so 0 equals 2 thirds pi r cubed plus 15 pi r squared minus 684 pi. Now, I don't like these pi's, but they're in all of them. And also, I noticed that I want to get rid of this fraction, so I'm going to divide everything by pi and multiply everything by 3. So 0 divided by pi and multiplied by 3 is still 0. And then on this side, I'm going to get 2 r cubed plus 45 r squared minus 2052, that's 684 times 3, and then I'm going to factor this. This is a really giant number, so of course I don't expect you to write all the PRR. Um, this, I'm going to let this be f of r, r is the variable, so make sure you use r, and this is not the same thing as the volume. The volume is this thing, okay, this is the volume, and so we have a new polynomial that, that we're playing with, so make sure you label it as a new thing, f of r. And we're going to test the zeros. I actually know that um, the root 
is 6. And how I knew that was I actually looked at this and I said, okay, it's got to be positive because 2052 is a really big negative number. And so I tried 4 and then I tried 6 and 6 ended up working. So that's how you do it. I'm going to do long division as well. You could use synthetic again if you like, but I'm going to use my long division just to remind you what it looks like. Either way, you do need to use your ninja zero in here, that placeholder. Just put it next to the R. And I'm uh, just going to give myself a little more space here. Ooh. And OK, so we're going to do our division right now. So 2R squared, so multiply that by R minus 6. We get 2R cubed minus 12R squared. Subtract that from that one, so I get 57r squared plus 0r. And then we'll multiply, so 57r squared minus um, 57r times 6 is actually 342r. Subtract off again, so we get 342r minus 2052. And the 342 up here. 342 times 6 is actually going to be 2052. So we get a remainder of 0, which is what we want because it is a factor. And so we'll write our f of r in factored form. f of r is going to equal um, r minus 6 times 2r squared plus 57r plus 342. This is a really big number, so I'm not going to spend too much time thinking about how to factor it. I'm just going to jump straight to quadratic formula. Again, make sure you use R here and not X because there is no X involved. So R equals negative B plus minus square root B squared minus 4AC. Always write out your formula. And then you just have to substitute all of the numbers in. 57 squared minus 4 times 2 is 8 times 342. You can just type it into your calculator, and you should get that r is equal to um, negative 57 plus minus 22.6 over 4. And when you type this into your calculator, you're going to get r equals negative 8.6, or r is equal to negative 19.9. Of course, the radius can't be negative, so these are both inadmissible. You do have to find them before you can say they're in inadmissible, so don't just assume they're inadmissible. And so we have one solution. Just double check what does our question ask us. It says what is the radius, So and it is in meters. So we'll say the radius is 6 meters the end. Put a little victory dance around it, and we're done. Now example C is going to be our last one, and it says an open top box is constructed from a piece of cardboard. It's 50 centimeters by 20 centimeters, and we're cutting out squares from each of the four corners and bending up the sides. So this is actually really easy to see when you're in person, so if you want you can ask me for a demonstration in class. Um, but basically what we're doing is we're taking these squares out, and we're going to fold them up along these dotted lines. And so we're going to make the height be x right here. And um, you don't have to write a let statement if you draw it on the diagram. And if you like, I'm just going to draw a 3D diagram as well to show you what that box is going to look like. So it looks something like this. So the height is x because I'm taking this square out and I'm folding these two together to make the height. And then you can see that we've got our box like this. So it sort of extends like this. It's an open top box. It doesn't have, it doesn't have a lid. And you can see that this section is actually going to be 20 minus 2x. That's because this part is x and this part is x and the whole thing is 20. So this from here to here is 20 minus 2x. And for the same reasoning, um, this here to here is 50 minus 2x because this part is x and this part is x. So I can label that on here. 20 minus 2x, that's the length, and 50 minus 2x is the width, or whatever. So the volume is going to be height times length times width. And I already know that that's 2,000 because that's what it says in the question. So we'll set it equal to 2,000 and we will um, multiply this out so we get 1,000 minus 140x 
plus 4x squared. And then we're going to multiply the x in and also put in standard form at the same time. You can do it afterwards if you want. I just like to do it all at once so that I get more things accomplished in one step. So we'll move the 2,000 over and set this to be equal 0. So now 4x cubed minus 140x squared plus 1,000x minus 2,000 is equal to 0. If you can common factor it, you definitely should because these numbers are really big. And I can actually see that I can factor it 4 out of all of those. So it, um, I'll divide everything by 4. Um, so I get x cubed minus um, 35x squared plus 250x minus 500. And now this is a really big number, so I'm not going to make you write all the PRR out, but you do have to still label it. So this is not volume anymore. This here, this right here is volume, okay? So it, this is the V. This is not V of X. So you have to give it a new name. Let's call it G of X. Um, and so we're going to find the solutions for G of X. And I already know the answer, so I'm just going to write it out. It's g of 5 is equal to 0. You can check it because when you do your division, you should get a remainder of 0, right? So I'm going to use synthetic right here. Just put, put the numbers there and put this 5 here. And I don't think I need to belabor it very much. You know how to do it by now. Um, and if you don't, you don't have to know. You can use long division again. So you know, it's up to you. You can see I got a remainder of 0. So in factored form, g of x is equal to x minus 5 times x squared minus 30x plus 100. So now I have one solution. x equals 5 is one of the solutions. And I'm going to find the other two solutions by doing the quadratic formula. And so you just have to write the formula every single time. And then substitute the values in. So it's 900 minus 400 over 2. And you get these answers. x equals 26.2 or x equals 3.8. So that ends up being the answer. And of course, x equals 5 as well. Now, it looks like we have three answers because we don't have anything negative. However, we do need to worry about this 26.2. It ends up being inadmissible. Why? Well, because if I wanted to cut out a square that was 26.2 centimeters long, that's longer than my actual side. So that's kind of impossible, of course. So we're going to deem 26.2 inadmissible and write our answer. So the squares are 3.8 centimeters by 3.8 centimeters or 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters. And that's it. So basically what we did today was solve polynomials and we did it by moving things over and then factoring to find the zeros and that is all you need to do. Hope you enjoyed it. Ask me any questions in class and I will see you soon.